Hi, this is Rich Carlson. Welcome to another episode of The Art of Rope Work here on Canyons and Crags. Recently I produced a series of videos on dead man anchors, intentionally refraining from doing any serious testing. I didn't want anybody saying, Rich Carlson tested this type of anchor and they all hold 500 pounds. There's just too many variables involved. In fact, this type of anchor might be as much art as it is science. But somebody came on my Art of Rope Work Facebook group and suggested that there would be some value in doing some tests, showing different variables, just so people can understand how tweaking a variable can make a difference in the strength. So, with the caveat that I'm not guaranteeing that any one of these anchors is strong enough to hold a human life, go ahead, grab your gear and rope, and follow along. This is where I pause for a moment so you can implement the two-step process. You already know the first step involves bitch slapping, so go ahead and bitch slap that subscription button. The second step involves you liking this video and sharing it on your favorite social media. Thanks. Anytime we're using creative anchors, we want to think about three things. One, we want to make the anchor solid enough for the task at hand. Second, we want to reduce the load that we're putting on the anchor by implementing soft rappel starts. And third, we want to back up the anchor with meat, sequencing, and testing. Be sure to check out my other video titled Friendly Friction and Meat for some techniques to accomplish these three things. For the tests, I used a Rock Exotica Enforcer load cell. I had it set for kilograms to get the static weight of the rocks I was using for mass. I left it on kilograms when I was doing pull tests. I also had it set to record the maximum force in each of the pulls. The first thing I set out to do is weigh a bunch of rocks, and I did weigh quite a few. I settled on these four because they had nice even weights. The two on the left each weigh 10 kilograms. Note the one in the lower left is a flat rock. I'm pointing it out because in some of my photos it doesn't show up because it's in the bottom of the pile. The rock in the center weighs 20 kilograms, and the one on the right weighs 45 kilograms. This is the rock I chose to bury as my dead man. You can see it's about nine and a half inches wide and roughly six inches tall. The hole that I dug is about eight and a half inches deep. I staked out the orange cord to keep track of the front of the hole as a reference for stacking additional mass on top later. You can see here that the dead man rock sits about two inches below the edge of the hole I dug. The next thing I did is girth hitch some webbing around the rock that I'm using as my dead man, making sure that the webbing came out of the bottom of the rock. Next I dug an exit trench perpendicular to the hole where I'll be burying the rock. The exit trench points in the direction that I'll be pulling. With the rock in the hole and the webbing coming out of the exit trench, I backfilled some of the dirt I didn't stomp up and down on it. All I did is step down with one foot. The next thing I did is stacked 40 kilograms of rocks on top of the dead man. This consists of the two 10 kilogram rocks and the 20 kilogram rock. In front of that, I placed the 45 kilogram rock for a total of 85 kilograms. I used the stump as a back anchor for my pull test and did the test with a 6 to 1 mechanical advantage. For each test, I did two or three pulls, all ranging between 238 and 250 kilograms, with an 85 kilogram mass on top of the dead man, nothing budged. Next, I removed the 45 kilogram rock, and moved one of the 10 kilogram rocks to the front, leaving with a total of 40 kilograms. Again, 
I did two to three pulls ranging from 238 to 250 kilograms of force and nothing budged. Now down to just 30 kilograms of mass on top of the dead man. Two to three pulls, 238 to 250 kilograms of force, nothing budged. For the last test, I removed all of the rocks from on top of the dead man. Again, I pulled two to three times, ranging 238 to 250 kilograms of force, nothing budged. The main thing that contributed to the strength of that particular dead man was the fact that I had good solid earth and I was able to carve a straight edge in the front of the dead man. But what if you don't have the luxury of good solid earth? What if you're digging in loose sand? So here I am digging a hole much bigger than the dead man to make sure that I can backfill with loose sand. I'm digging in the heat of the midday sun because in case the sand was moist, I wanted it to have time to dry out. For the dead man, I'm using the same dark gray rock that I used for the other tests. Here you can see the size of the hole relative to the size of the dead man. When I backfilled, I just tossed the sand into the hole and did not compact it. This time I marked the front of the dead man rock with the little gray rock that you see at the lower part of your screen. Here I've added the same 85 kilograms of mass on top of the dead man. And you can see how loose the sand is with no compaction in front of the dead man. And here you can see my test setup with the dead man on the far left working off a very large rock as my back anchor. For my first test I only used a 2 to 1 mechanical advantage and generated 132 kilograms of force. From where I was pulling I didn't see any movement so I stopped but if you look very very close you can see there is a slight movement in the rocks. For the next pull test I switched to a 6 to 1 mechanical advantage and pulled until failure. At the point of failure I had generated 202 kilograms of force. Hey, before we continue with the testing, be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's turn this video into a conversation. I'm really curious to know if you were surprised by any of the test results. For this next test, I girth hitched my webbing around my 20 kilogram rock and set the 45 kilogram rock in front of it for a total of 65 kilograms. And for these tests, all I was doing is laying the rocks on the ground and pulling uphill. With a 2 to 1 mechanical advantage, I generated 123 kilograms of force before the rock started to move. Next I made one change in how the rocks were laying. You notice how both rocks have a wedge shape to them? The 20 kilogram rock with the webbing girth hitched around it had less mass on the left side and wanted to rotate clockwise. When the 45 kilogram rock was set so its greater mass was on the left, the rocks did not move until I generated 123 kilograms of force. When I turned the 45 kilogram rock around so it had less mass on the left hand side, it moved at only 92 kilograms of force. Notice how the rocks are rotating clockwise as they're being pulled. In my video titled Friendly Friction and Meat, I demonstrated how friction could hold a significant amount of weight when a load is suspended over a rock. In this particular spot, my 53 pound kettlebell 
only registered 18 pounds when measured with a scale designed for large fish. For this test, I went back to the same spot. But instead of measuring the holding power of friction when merely suspending a load, I wanted to see how much force was necessary to overcome friction when lifting my 45 kilogram rock. Using a two to one mechanical advantage, I needed to generate 144 kilograms of force to lift the rock. These next two pull tests are of cairn anchors. Both configurations are from my video titled Dead Man Anchors Part 3. At this location I had no choice but to pull straight out on the anchors. This first configuration is what I'd referred to as advanced inspectable. You can see it started to fail at 124 kilograms. The second configuration I had just referred to as inspectable. The webbing is being pinched between the rock it is tied around and the surface which creates a bit more friction and holding power. You can see it started to fail at 140 kilograms. I wanted to test the cairn anchor in a spot where I could pull down and not straight out. So I found this spot. In my test you'll see I'm pulling my cairn over that peak on the right. Down in the washes, there's plenty of solid rocks to choose from. But at the top of the hills, the only thing I could find were big blocks of sandstone. This block weighed 28 kilograms. Unfortunately, that tip broke off as I was moving it. I ended up gathering two more rocks, and the three of them together weighed 42 kilograms. I wanted to pull straight down on the cairn anchor without risking pulling the rocks down on top of my head. So I put a pulley at the base of the tree, which is located there at the base of the cliff, and then redirected my haul system off of another tree about 30 or 40 feet back. I was pulling with a 6 to 1 mechanical advantage and pulled until I could feel the rock move and look up and see it coming towards the edge. These are before and after photos showing the movement of the cairn. There's a black mark on the rock that I identified as a reference point. You can see I moved the cairn about two feet when I was pulling on it. This 42 kilogram cairn moved with 190 kilograms of force. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. But don't forget the three principles I mentioned at the beginning. Anytime we're dealing with creative anchors, we need to make sure that we're building our anchor solid enough for the task at hand. We need to do what we can to reduce the load we're putting on the anchor by implementing soft propel starts. And we need to back them up, implementing sequencing and testing. If you want to learn some cool techniques, to make Creative Anchors Bomber, check out my other video titled Friendly Friction and Meat. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it will benefit others, please share it on your favorite social media. The best way to keep this old man motivated to produce more videos like this one, while I still can, will be to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.